This is the Marketing Umbrella Podcast, where it's all about getting the information you need from successful leading marketers to build and grow your digital marketing agency. Brought to you by Itumar Shafir, founder and CEO of Umbrella, the technology platform and brand that is powering thousands of marketing agencies around the country. Find him at UmbrellaUS.com. Now, here's your host, Kevin Pruitt. This is Kevin Pruitt with the Marketing Umbrella Podcast. I have a very special guest with me today. Thank you again for joining us. But this is podcast is really about how do we help digital marketing agency owners grow and scale their business. But our guest today is a story brand certified guide and copywriter. She works with holistic wellness companies to create a clear message and a transformational customer journey. After writing hundreds of emails, websites, funnels, and sales scripts, she has a knack for seeing the soul of a brand and communicating in a way that attracts and inspires the right audience. I'm excited to welcome Katie Ward to the podcast. Katie, thanks for joining us. Yeah, hello, hello. Thank you for having me. Anything that you would add to that? Uh, that it's I, I promise you that introduction is shorter than than what you can deliver on. So. Oh, really? <laughs> Well, it's kind of my job to be succinct as a, as a copywriter. I mean, I could talk about how, you know, I like Star Wars and have a cool family and <laughs> that kind of just stuff. going to anything. Was it um, the old Mark Twain adage that said, I was going to write you a short letter, but I didn't have time. I didn't so have I wrote time. you a long yep. letter instead. Yep, exactly. That is it. it is for sure. But yeah, unpack a little bit for us, Katie. Who is Katie Ward? Goodness. Um, well, I guess I should start with story brand. So I imagine if you guys um, who are listening are in marketing that you've at least heard of story brand and Donald Miller, his books, including that first book, building a story brand. It wasn't his first book. He was a, a memoir kind of novelist before that book um, and ended up writing writing a memoir, ready to publish it. And then he was like, what if I marketed this latest book with the same framework I used to write it? This like hero's journey screenplay type of framework. And it worked. And, you know, then over time that became building a story brand, which is this book about how to use a hero's journey to position your brand and make a really clear message. And then there's been multiple books and, you know, trainings and leadership and business um, kind of development that's come out of story brand, the company now. So that's what story brand is. I got certified in 2018. So I'm on year five and uh, what that lets me do is have my own clients and partner with agencies, have my own clients, make my own schedule, have my own business, which is wonderful. It's what I always wanted. Um, and also to help companies that are really impact driven, have a clear message, um, and the reason I decided on StoryBrand and getting certified with StoryBrand was that I was working in San Diego. I was around a lot of um, transformation brands, whether it was life coaching or speakers um, or health. Um, I was around a lot of innovative sustainability and like new sustainability technology. And I was so fascinated by it. I wanted it to capture more of the market like basically for more and more customers to kind of switch over to um, better options for everything from health to sustain more sustainable products. Um, but the problem was these companies had new things they were offering, like new mm -hmm. methods and new right. technologies. And it was, it was just confusing. It was like, how would somebody who's used to buying one thing know that there was another option and how to understand that other option? And so I felt like this kind of area I was tapping into these industries had a little bit of an ivory tower effect mm. um, because it was hard to understand what they were doing for the regular person who already had, you know, purchasing habits. So um, I saw the story brand keynote and I was like, this is the tool I need to help impactful brands reach more people with really clear and simple language and tell a story about the customer exactly where they are um, and the shared values and the way that the company, the good company solves this customer's problem. You know, if we tell that story, well, it will, it'll broaden their impact. Um, they'll make a bigger difference. They'll, you know, be able to switch more of the marketplace over to just 
better ways of buying and selling. And so that's why I got certified. And um, the good news for me was that even from the beginning, I really was able to work with those kind of companies and it's been referral kind of based ever since. And then I also really love going to conferences and doing my keynotes. I do the story brand keynote regularly. Um, and yeah, and then working on the copy and just like in that intro, the, the website, the emails, the overall brand message, sometimes training the team on like how to talk about their brand and, um, and how to onboard members internally so they know the messaging and everybody's saying the same thing. Yeah, um, crucial. Yeah, all those Absolutely things. Absolutely crucial. I it's it's interesting. I I uh, before we hit the record button, we were chatting offline and and uh, just how eclectic you know the if you if you search Katie online, I mean it, it is a it's a very broad picture of I mean she's she's lived life online. I mean there's you know whether it's her art, whether it's travel, whether it's you know just life, you know, just, she, she is very open with sharing, you know, the, the things that she's experiencing, you know, not just within the, the framework of doing business, but within the framework of, of just living. And it is, it was really cool to see just how, you know, art shapes life and vice versa. And, you know, we talked about that just, just a moment ago, but I'm, I'm really curious. So you hear all the time, the, the whole idea about, you know, companies need to tell their story. But my question is this, and I, and, and I, I really want you to, you know, just take a moment, take a breath after I ask you this question and think, okay, how do you really answer this? So does the story itself define the, I guess, the, um, the target messaging, or are you writing a story to achieve a specific message? Do you understand the, the differences in those kind of those two so. things? Yeah. So that's a good question. When we say the word story, um, it has a certain connotation. And a few years ago, there was like a big fad of story and storytelling. And mm -hmm. a bunch of brands came up with story in their name. And there's a difference between anecdotes, like a, a story about someone who did something. Um, and maybe those anecdotes are useful for content or useful for or context. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Store or like fairy tales or novels, or there's those stories. And then with the story for a brand, what we're really talking about is not, Oh, you need to pack your communication with anecdotes. That's not what we're talking about mm -hmm. with story brand, at least. Um, what's useful about story is that it's a tool to capture people's attention. So if you can take what determines the story is who the customer is and what they want. And you don't make up a story, right? Usually they'll tell you, they'll tell you, here's a problem I was dealing with before I found your service. Here's uh, what I wanted, the problem I was facing, and then what it was like for me to purchase the product or service and kind of transform this problem to success. Their journey with the product or the service or journey as a customer of the company is the story of the brand. And what a yeah. great distinction. It's yeah. The kind of defining, like based on the persona that you're, you're trying to identify, you know, the, the avatar, I guess, is another way to, to put that is like, who is, as you're describing their customer journey and walking them through it, you know, through content, through process and, um, but it, that, that question has always been interesting to me. It's almost like the, you know, the chicken and versus the egg, you know, or the, what's the, what is the, the outcome, you know, that you're trying to achieve is it once we discover our story, then we discover our messaging or are we writing, you know, content yeah. toward the target of, of a message. But if you're, if you're talking to agencies and I, I don't want to beat this dead horse too much, but because I, because I do want to unpack more deeply what you're doing now, but the, the whole idea, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, a couple of years ago, this was really avant-garde, you know, for them, for, for companies to, or marketing agencies to use the word storing and, and this is what we do. This is our, this is how our process, you know, is fleshed out. But what do you think is, what's authentic in this space? What is real in this space? If you're, if you're working with an agency or if you're coaching an agency owner about storing, you know, as far as the, the content delivery or whatever, or, or even the process, 
what is what are a couple of things that you think are really crucial for them to understand about this that would make it more effective? Um, that's a good question. I think understanding basically the psychology of attention that um, you know people are inundated with so much information and data, and our brains are just they're like not only evolutionary evolutionarily programmed to edit out information mm -hmm. they're in like high alert mode to edit out information because of how much comes at us every day and so when you list information or even tell a story that has nothing to do with the person and the problems they're experiencing in their life they're still going to edit it out so thinking in terms of our customers brains are consistently looking for ways to solve their problems. That's part of their brain's functioning. And they're also, you know, trying to conserve calories in their brain. They're going to edit out anything that doesn't relate directly to how they feel and what they need and want. And so um, that makes the storytelling a lot more succinct. And one of the things that I see um, I've worked with a lot of brands who will work with an agency or work with a brander and they'll send me this huge fat document and they're like, we don't really know what to do with all this, but this is what we made and we're still confused. <laughs> and, you know, it's not a bad process. Sometimes it is appropriate to really unpack each of the products of a brand and have a lot of information, especially when the business is complex and there's right. multiple, multiple customers and realizing like the, the team and the company, most people who aren't in marketing think it's really confusing black box. They don't understand it. They don't know how it works. <laughs> and so to be able to say, here's what you need to know. Your customers have this problem. Here's how you solve it. When you tell the story where the customer is the hero and you're the guide for their problem, um, then that business and the team can understand more easily what marketing is. Um, and often they only need a few deliverables to go off of, like, here's our brand message. And here's what we can send our writers that has like some of the voice and tone and personality. Um, but more isn't always better. You know, it could be, but keeping in mind that everyone's brain is editing out information that's inessential. And the, the story about the customer um, and then the brand as the guide is going to be really orienting both for the customer and for, for the brand. Um, does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yeah. No, absolutely. And I, I think, you know, as you, as you were talking, I'm thinking about just this, you know, how, how computer memory supposedly, you know, doubles like what every nine to 18 months. I mean, the amount of information that we consume or, or have access to right now is, is just at quantum levels and our brains would have to be able to filter out, you know, the vast majority of it. Otherwise um, we just, our brains would fry, you know, just from mm -hmm. sheer volume. But if you're, if you're working with an agency, if you're coaching an agency or whatever, and they, they are wanting to kind of walk in this stream and they're saying, okay, I, I love the idea of the hero's journey. I love the idea of, you know, kind of identifying, you know, with the, with the customer as the hero of, of the story, but that sounds, that sounds really good and ethereal, you know, just as we're talking about it, but practically, is there a, is there a process? Is there a, okay, here's the three-step process that, that you go through okay. at a, at a, you know, at a, 500 foot level. We talked about the 30,000 foot journey here, but now here, let's, let's fly down a little closer to the tarmac and say, okay, here's the three steps that you would walk somebody through. Yeah. Um, one of those steps would be making absolutely sure that the company, the, the company who's the client of the agency. So the company is certain about who their customer is. So either that means they've had a lot of success with their, their product or their product line, um, or they have a main product that they sell first, main service that they sell first. Mm. They have like a clear customer journey with their products and services. So um, sometimes it's actually most useful to say like, hey, go find a specialist who will 
you know, really deeply research your customers and find out who they are um, and then find those ideal customers and get their reviews. What do they say? How do they talk about the brand? How do they talk about their problems? And this so is more than just one, demographics, uh, right? This yeah. It, the just interesting kind of thing about, demographics. Yeah. The interesting thing about demographics is that it demographics can tell you about the, the personality of your brand. They won't necessarily tell you about the positioning of your brand. Mm. Um, the most important thing to know about your customer is what they want. So if I'm, you know, a company that sells furniture and I could have, you know, stylish people, but of all ages, people that are just out of college to, um, cherish, here's a good one, cherish resells furniture. So there's a huge demographic of people who want resold vintage antiques. Some of them it's because right. it's artsy. Some of them it's because it's sustainable. Right. Um, the demographics are really large for that company. It doesn't really tell them their positioning, but everybody who shops at Cherish has the one thing in common. They want, uh, resale furniture. Basically mm -hmm. they want furniture that's been loved before. They want furniture that, um, is not brand new. Now what Cherish would need to do is really drill down. Are our customers, are they in this because of the sustainability Are they, you know, what's their, their it's why? It's like the quality of furniture that was built 30 years ago. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Could it could be be. And some of those things are benefits mm -hmm. and not the actual main problem the person's trying to mm -hmm. solve. It could just be like, no, I just want right resold furniture. It's a benefit that it's more sustainable and more sturdy and all that stuff. Um, See, now you're just making it more complicated. Right. I, I, so, thought it was, anyway. I thought it was dumbing down enough so I could understand it. And here we go again. You, you're changing, you're shifting the play. <laughs> no, no, no. Again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the step one, make sure you have who the customer is. Um, when you get the demographics, that'll tell you about the voice. So if it turns out the customer really is all 21 years old, then you can have a really colloquial fun, mm -hmm. um, voice. Very to targeted brand. too. Yeah. <laughs> sure. But if you have a demographic where your customers all want the same thing and you're solving their problem, but it's a huge demographic, then your voice might be a little more general. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, that's step one drill down on who the customer is and hear from them. And then in making them the hero, maybe step two would be, um, yeah, you, you want to know how they, how they feel. Um, and rather than throwing at them all of the, so, so like if I was an agency and I'm working with a company that's like, but I promise we solve 15 problems. All of them, we solve them. We have 15 products that we solve 15 problems. That's gonna be confusing for their audience, right? right? So making the customer the hero is finding like, what's the very first entry point into this person's life, into their story? What's something that they're really feeling that we can address and solve with just one main product or service or one main message? Um, and then, you know, you can unpack all of the other problems that the company solves after in emails or later in the funnel. Um, but really orienting to the one main thing. So it makes sense when you make the person, the hero, like when you, when you go into a movie and watch a movie about a hero, they don't want to like save the day and get a haircut and adopt a cat and like all these different things. Like there's usually one thing that they want maybe a little side story probably doesn't come up at the exact same time. Um, and it's the same, it's the same with the branding and marketing. Like we, we want to open one story loop. So, um, yeah, practically like, oh, they need a toothbrush. There's lots of things they need for oral health, but the first story we're going to tell is the toothbrush story. And then we'll keep talking to them about other products that we have afterward. Um, yeah. And maybe that third step is, on this same subject of attention, like just being really aware of um, earning the customer's attention. So once we've solved their this first main problem that's relevant to them, then we've earned their attention enough to be like, hey, we also solve this other problem, or um, we want to continue sharing with you and educating you on how to solve this problem on your own. That's kind of what 
what a, a funnel can be. It can be right. a journey that continues to grow someone in knowledge in, you know, depends on what the brand is. The, the, the customer journey can be a whole transformation process. Like you can completely educate and change someone's life. Um, and, and buying habits. Yeah, totally. And you, you do that with like a very first, very simple message and purchase, and then unfold it from there, like really earning their trust and attention of kind of over time. How, how much does the product affect the, the utilization of, of telling the story? So like, I, I think, you know, if, if it's a product that, that my client base would have very little knowledge of, but yet they could get very passionate about like a, a new tech product or something like that, that really is revolutionary versus say a Band-Aid. Right. You know? I mean, a Band-Aid, I don't need a story about a Band-Aid. I've got a cut. You know, I know that's what I put on cuts when I, I don't care what kind it is. It's whatever's cheapest when I go to Walgreens to buy band-aids, you know, so to speak. Sure. So how does yeah. the, how much does the, the product or service itself come into play when you're really talking about this? Um, it totally does. And I'll, I'll create a distinction here. Um, so there's kind of phases of problem awareness and brand awareness. The customer can be unaware of the problem and unaware of the solution right all the way to with a band-aid they're aware of the problem and they're aware of the solution now the band-aid company is still telling a story like you have a cut mm -hmm. it hurts <laughs> so we're gonna sell you a band-aid and this That's has still Barbie kind on of it. a story That's yeah, right, right, exactly. That's right. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna make you feel happy and peppy with your band-aid um but yeah so for a company where um like I'm working with a company right now that is, it's a sustainable um, HVAC efficiency improvement company. That's so much to think about at once, right? Basically, they just help you save money and save energy on your energy and on your house, like with your air conditioning and heating and stuff like that. They have a bunch of technology and tools to do that. It's kind of confusing. Um, and the customer is usually not aware of their problem or of the solution because right. AC is just AC. They may be um, generally aware that, yeah, I think right. I need They're to like, save oh, energy this is expensive. I need to do something. Yeah, yeah, I should, yeah, right. I should do this. I should do that. So this company would need to first educate the customer, you know, like, hey, would you like to save money on, on your power bills, basically? So that saving money is a problem that somebody can, that their customers immediately relate to, even though the real problem is like energy efficiency, energy waste, you know, climate change, like the scope that the company's tackling is much bigger than like you should, if you'd like to save money, you know? Right. So, but they have, they really do have to go through this process of educating the customer about the problem and how much more they're spending than they have to. And then on the solution, which is like, you don't have to replace your HVAC. It's this specific technology that they have and they got to educate about the technology. So it totally, totally um, relates to the product or service. I see this with coaches and kind of thought leaders a lot mm -hmm. too, um, where their, their clients come to them thinking well, this is my problem. And the coach has, they're, they're masterful with this problem. So they know it's actually something else. You know, somebody who say they like want to lose weight and they think their problem is I want to lose weight. I just have bad snacking habits. The coach is not going to say like, you actually don't have that problem. You actually have this problem right up front because it would just be really confusing for the person. Um, that's, it's a similar, they got to help them to be problem aware. Like, well, you have, you actually have allergies and intolerances and here's the solution for that. It's this, you know, uh, elimination diet program where we find out what your allergies are and then you're going to end up losing weight. So similar thing, if they were just saying, you got to change your emotional habits and do this, it, it just could be really confusing if that makes sense. Um, so being able to tell with, as an agency with your clients, with the customers that are coming to them and coming to their website, how aware are they of their problem and aware of the solution are they? Because the messaging is going to completely depend on, on that. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, that's why, the, I mean, that, that front end kind of discovery process about really identifying who your customers are, identifying their voice and, and kind of identifying that journey, you know, is so crucial um, because you, you really do. I mean, the messaging has to target, they have to be able to identify with that. You know, it, mm -hmm. it is the hero's journey it is the story that they have to, to see themselves in that journey, you know, so yeah. to speak, but are you, are you trying to get to the point that you know, their voice so well, you're almost s using their voice back to them? Is that, is that a, is that kind of a destination we're trying to arrive at here? I guess is it's kind of like a customer service question. Like how do you deal with as an agency, how do you deal with a customer type of thing? No, I'm, I'm just far developing messaging. So the, I mean, if you really want me to identify with the, a story you're telling me or whatever, mm -hmm. you will use my language, you know, you'll use sure, my, yeah. that my understanding, my perspective, my, you know, whatever. And, and that's, if you've identified that early, if you identified their voice early, you know, what are they mm -hmm. saying to you? Then how do you repeat? How do you, I guess, in essence, share the story of the, of the service, the product, whatever you're trying to do using those that same understanding is there, is that part of the process as well? Yeah. I mean, I've heard, um, copywriters say that the best copy is when you read something you're thinking like, Oh, I, mm. that's exactly what I was thinking in my mind. I just read it on the page. Um, so yes, you do want to do that. Um, and there's also a piece of like the brand is positioning as the guide, as the authority. And so they'll want to um, just speak in a way that really cares for and is sensitive to the customer's problem and, um, that showing empathy as the guide basically for the problem. So they can, they can say, if you've been asking this question, or if you've been feeling this, and then the customer's like, I have been feeling and asking that, <laughs> and then so they would good. go I into, you right. Yeah. Then they would go into, well, here's what we can do about it. Here's who we are. And then they might sound more like themselves than like the brain of the customer, right? Um, and just knowing how to kind of draw the customer in and empathize with them, yeah, with their own language before trying to give them information that's kind of from the brand's voice. Mm -hmm. And this is, I mean, it's a much broader, I guess, process than just messaging. I mean, there, there, it affects a lot of things in the marketing process. I mean, the, the whole story brand, I guess, strategy is, is pretty comprehensive. You know, when you look at it, it seems, well, it can be simple and comprehensive at the same time, you know, the, the whole idea, but as, as I'm, if I'm leading a marketing agency and I think, Hey, this, this really resonates, you know, what's the, what is, is it a, is it a, like a franchised, you know, system? Is it a, um, I mean, are you, are you a certified, you know, story brand coach, you know, can you lead people through the process or bring people under the, in the community type thing? Yeah. Great question. Um, so as an agency, you kind of have two paths and actually you can do both. <laughs> so the first that I recommend is that story brand has a lot of free materials. So um, using, you know, reading the book, building a story brand, and then the next one, marketing made simple, I'll show you how to make a brand script and then how to apply it to your funnel. Um, and even maybe trying those tools on the back end with the client, you wouldn't be able to tell the client you're using those tools until you're actually certified, but just using them to orient to their copy, or maybe even doing your own branding as an agency or your own messaging as an agency with those tools to get familiar with them. And then um, story brand certifies agencies, guides and agencies. So you'd have the option of either sending somebody that like maybe your copywriter on your team to go get the story brand certification as a guide, which is what I am, or you can get certified as a whole agency. And then, um, yeah, then people can search you up and find you on their directory. And you can either, you can go in person basically in Nashville and do the the training for three days, three to five days. Um, it's five days for the training actually. And then they give you all these amazing tools and they train you how to use the framework. And from there you can go forth and take your clients through the story. Go forth in story. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. And then, you know, you recertify every year, um, but you have your, it's independent. You can use it however you like. Um, and they have this amazing community of story brand guides. It's like 900 people strong now in a huge Slack and it's, it's active all the time. I mean, I'm like right. referring people out. I'm getting business from there. I'm asking questions there. There's a long thread for copywriters where we just like see really terrible ads and we post terrible ads in there. Like <laughs> it's a great community too. So is, and is it something that, that as an agency that if, if you were quote story brand certified as an agency, is it something that you're it's it's more of a framework that you're kind of putting flesh on the bones. I mean, you, you still are doing things the way you wanted to do them, but yet you're kind of yeah. using this as a as a guide, I guess, so yeah. for lack of a better term, on on how to deliver totally know, the the service that you are already maybe delivering prior to that. Yeah. So, um, like for example, I use. I take my clients just through the story brand tools because I'm doing only copy. So mm -hmm. we do the brand script and then I write and I show them like why I wrote what I wrote. Um, and I've seen and worked with ag agencies that do, you know, kind of the full visual brand, the website development, they build the funnels, they do the social. And so you could integrate the brand script into that process wherever it really fits. Um, you could even have your clients go fill out a brand script um, as one of the exercises to onboard them. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it could, you could deliver it as part of a larger deck that has some of the voice and personality or their right. visual brand. Um, I have seen, it seems like the guides that have the most success as a certified guide or agency um, really put that in the forefront and rather than having, you know, a lot of different services and story brand is one of them, they bake it into the whole process. Mm -hmm. Um, cause people are, they know about it. And once they find out about it, they, they want somebody that does that. Um, and regardless of the tools that, that you utilize, this is, I mean, it's like, you know, you have the tools and you have the strategy, you know, how do you mm -hmm. put these two things together? And, and because, you know, agencies will have their own you know, tools that they, that they utilize in this process, but, but, uh, just the whole idea of storing, is this one of many approaches to marketing or is, has this kind of become, you know, is this, this is like, we well, yeah, this is virtually, this is the apple of, you know, of, of marketing, standard. <laughs> you, know, you know, this is the standard that everything else is kind of measured by, or how, what, how do you see that just in general? That's a great question. Um, there are so many frameworks for marketing. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason for that is that marketers know how to market. And so they'll come up with a great framework that works for them and then they'll market it. Exactly. <laughs> and so there's That's lots right. and lots of them. Um, especially like with copy, there's different frameworks specifically for copywriting. Um, there's frameworks for branding. I mean, you can just Google and find all kinds of different frameworks. Um, the nice thing about story brand is that it makes understanding what a company does simple and easy to teach marketing to the, to the client. Um, and internally as well. And internally. Yeah. yeah. And it, and it does, but it doesn't deal with any of the, it doesn't tell you how to do social media. It doesn't tell you how to run ads. It does. It's none of the technical part of, of marketing. It's just you know, these seven steps, the, who's the customer and what do they want and what's their problem and who are you as a guide? And, um, so there's just seven steps of this kind of brand script. Um, and story brand has a lot of other tools, um, like business made simple university where they like kind of teach you how to run a business and there's lots and lots of tools in there. Um, and as far as like a gold standard framework, it's, I don't, I don't know if I'm the best person to answer that because I think it works great and I prefer <laughs> it over everything else I've found. Um, and I've learned a lot more to help my copy and my customers over time from copy frameworks, um, to, to just how fast marketing technology changes. Um, like, okay, now we need to be using less words because of this algorithm or, 
all that kind of stuff. Um, so there are a few copywriters um, and books and frameworks that are like, this is always going to work. And then there's constantly dozens that change really fast because of the technology. Yeah. Um, Here's the course of the week, you know, right. the, the marketing course of the week here at yeah. the, you know, the marketing agency. And I've noticed that StoryBrand helped me to be able to understand business better mm -hmm. um, because it's, you understand psychology when you understand it and, um, and, and being able to look at a business and say like, do they have a clear and simple business model? Or can we communicate a clear and simple business model? Um, that's helped me make business partnership decisions. You know, like, do I want to work at this company? Do I want to take on this client? Um, if I can't fit it clearly in a, like solve this customer's problem and it wins the day. Um, I didn't really have the tool. Like I worked with some businesses <laughs> before I was certified when I was just super brand new as a freelancer and entrepreneur. And I was like, I don't know if there's a business here, but I don't know. I'm kind of new at this. And like, it seems like a lot of big promises and a lot of like investment funding, but I'm not really sure, but like, I'm the youngest one here. And once I, you know, had these tools of like, no, it needs to solve a problem, call the customer to action. There's a clear success. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, and I mean, that's kind of the basics of like business knowledge, but it's yeah. So easy yeah. to get away from that and think it needs to be more complicated or like, it's just easy to get enrolled in, you know, like anything. <laughs> so to be able to say like, it needs to fit <laughs> right. helps. And it's, it's just a good process to go through to, I mean, an evaluation process as well as, you know, and it, it is much broad, more broad than just the, the marketing messaging, you know, of a company, but I um man, I could continue to ask you questions all day, but I I certainly uh, I'd love to honor your time here. But I and and I'm I'm kind of chomping at the bit to get to this next, uh, okay. the next next part of our of our podcast here. But um, this is a kind of a rapid Q and A um, area that there you're gonna think these are kind of disparate questions, but there's a method to the madness here. So just answer them rapidly and just kind of without thinking, just off the okay. cuff. And I'm just really curious. So number one, did you get along with your parents growing up? I did. Oh, I was like the firstborn want to do everything. Perfect child. Perfect child. Third parent. Uh, yeah, anxious, I love it. However, <laughs> do what? I was anxious. So oh. <laughs> created a, kind of an anxious child, like a Hermione picture that that was me growing up. <laughs> did do you have siblings? I have two brothers and they're hilarious and wonderful. They live together in Atlanta and I would not have a sense of humor except for them. <laughs> I threw it out. Me, yeah. Do you have a pet? I do not have pet. I mean, I have plants, but I like traveling too much to have pets. I'm not a big yeah, pet person. That, that that would be a problem. That would be a problem. What time do you wake up every day? Um, so funny. So I've I have always been a morning person. I love waking up really early. Um, I for health reasons had to go off of caffeine last about a year and a half ago. And now, um, I have much more, it's like between seven and eight, sometimes it's eight and I wake up and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm a terrible person. <laughs> and I feel so bad. I'm waking up at eight. I've lost and half then the I day go about already. my day and I get everything done, you know, and it's fine and nothing bad happens. <laughs> <laughs> so has that changed when you go to bed? Um, it has, I like, I do tend to go to bed a little bit later, especially because I like painting at mm -hmm. night. So I don't know. Mentally, I like am aspirationally a morning person, but functionally, I'm no longer a morning person. <laughs> hey, it may it may come back around your your so. circadian rhythm or whatever may may reset at some point in time without caffeine. Ideal vacation spot? Do you go anywhere in the world? Oh, that's a great question, man. Um, You're just running through like a travel guide in your mind. Yes, you so many totally. places you want to go. Gosh, well, I, so I most consistently go back and visit my friends in San Diego. I love it there. And I think my ideal vacation spot would be either the Greek islands. Um, that was really beautiful when I visited and I haven't seen even the best ones, um, I think. Um, or there's these five little towns on the coast of Italy called the Cinque Terre. Cinque Terre, yep. 
and I've only been in the winter, um, but you can go and like hike between them and they've kind of been preserved from tourism. All the locals own the businesses and they're built into the mountainside. Only get there by boat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so lovely. So yeah, it, yeah, I... absolutely. Um, how does faith play a role in business? Ooh, in great question. Life? Yeah. Such a great question. So um, I'm going to take this in the route of it's always played a, a big part. Um, I've always kind of felt guided and led to each step of business and all my life decisions. And one of the thing I, things I noticed in being a female entrepreneur is that I was around, I was around a lot of entrepreneurs when I was starting my business and there's, you know, there's like the hustle language and it just didn't align with me, mm-hmm. um, physically, spiritually, emotionally, whatever. And so part of my like spiritual journey with my business has been, can I, um, what's the feminine version of doing this? And what that looks like for me now is that my business is really lifestyle friendly. Yep. Which is why I can wake up at 8 a.m. and it's not the end of the world. <laughs> and it's also all referral. It's like very receiving. Mm-hmm. And um, and then even with each client, it's kind of an intuitive, am I, am I going to take this client or not? Um, I mean, there's logic there, obviously. I have vetting processes. Um, and and venturing farther and farther into holistic health and impact. Um, it has been a, a kind of faith driven type thing. Um, and we, I think you mentioned this earlier. It was something that I wanted to revisit about agencies that are either starting growing, um, and I, oh, in the, the spectrum of things, you mentioned the spectrum of things that I'm into, like I'm into painting mm-hmm. and traveling and all this kind mm-hmm. of stuff. So one of the things I see with marketing agencies Um, it it's, there's not a a standard business model for a marketing agency. So it's really easy to have clients. And then they ask you, do you do X, Y, Z? And then suddenly you're doing X, Y, Z. And, um, it's, it can really sap your time and your energy and your life becomes this business of kind of just being a yes man for clients and agencies are infamous for that. Um, and it totally doesn't have to be that way. You can have systems, you can have a few things that you're great at. Um, thinking about the lifestyle that you want to have is as important, if not more important than the services you want to provide and the sales and all those other pieces for specifically an agency, because they can be so nebulous. Um, yeah, think about like, here's how often I want to work. Here's how I want to do projects. Here's how long I want the projects to take. Like, how long are you willing to have open tabs in your brain? Um, for me, it's like about four to six weeks. And if I have bigger clients with longer term projects, it starts to kind of burn my brain. Like I like things to open and close, open and close you know, so that lifestyle um, consideration is really, really helpful. And it, it spiritually, it was like, I was partially led, like, all right, I'm going to build this business to be happy and fulfilled. And I could have scaled to an agency or hired a bunch of people a bunch of times now. And part of it was the, just the lifestyle. Um, and so, you know, in part that makes me just like, I'm a freelancer still, I'm like a glorified freelancer still. Mm. And who cares? I do great. I, I love my clients and I, I get to have a lot of flexibility with my time. Um, so, and you get yeah. to exist in a, in a very broad community, you know, as right. well and, and a, in a healthy way. And, um, I mean, I, it's interesting cause I, I was actually going to ask you, you know, to kind of close this up and you literally just did. I mean, what a, <laughs> what a way to, to wrap up our, our chat today. And, um, Katie, I just, I really just, I, I loved connecting with you and, and just hearing your story as well as you're hearing your hero's journey that you, you, that you are currently going on in this process. And, uh, just want to thank you again for just taking time to join us on the marketing umbrella podcast and 
just help give us some valuable tips and strategies to help agency owners grow and scale their business. Katie, have a great yeah. weekend. Oh, thanks so much. It was great to chat. Thank you for tuning in to another great episode of the Marketing Umbrella Podcast, where we provide the information you need from successful leading marketers to build and grow your digital marketing agency. To learn more, go to UmbrellaUS.com.